In this video, we're going to solve this differential equation, and you'll see that in doing so, we're going to have a situation where for the auxiliary equation, we are going to uh, run into the situation of having uh, complex roots. Now, if you watch the previous videos in our series here, incidentally, the uh, playlist for all the videos is at the website, digital-university.org. Now here, remember the strategy is that for the differentials, the derivatives, we replace them and we've been using the variable m. And so we have m. This is a second order derivative, so it's m squared plus 2. This is a first order derivative, so it's m to the first power. And here we have we could think of this as a differential to the zero power, so that would be plus 5 times m to the zero power, which of course is just 1. So here is the differential equation, set it equal to 0, and then we solve for m. And remember from our um, introduction uh, video concerning auxiliary equations that premise was that the general solution to these kind of equations where we have a second order differential equation and all of the uh, coefficients are constants, then y equals e to the mx, and this could be multiplied by a constant here, some arbitrary constant, and m is obtained then by solving this what we call the auxiliary equation. And here we see that we solve it using the quadratic formula m equals minus 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 4, minus 4ac, 4 times 5, that's 20 divided by 2 times a, that's 2. So here is m, and m will equal, this is 2 divided by 2 is 1, minus 1, plus or minus the square root, that would be the square root of minus 16, divided by 2. So this will equal, this will then be 4, the square root of minus 16, that's 4i. So let's take this out and write in 4i in its place. Divided by 2, then that's going to be minus 1 plus or minus 2i. So we have two different solutions, or two different values of m. m1 minus 1 plus 2i, m2 minus 1 minus 2i. What we demonstrated in the last video is that when m has these complex values, specifically they occur together as uh, complex conjugates, an a plus an ib, and an a minus ib. Once we have that determined, we can immediately write down what the solution is. It's going to be e raised to the ax cosine bx, again e to the ax times the sine of bx. So here, this is a. This is b, so y equals some constant e to the minus x times the cosine of 2x plus another constant e to the a minus x times the sine of 2x. And that right there should be the end of the problem. And again, it's real easy to do once 
we realize that this formula holds, and this was the formula that we derived in the last video. So that would be then the end of this problem. Again, it's um, once you realize this relation, then when we encounter equations like this, you write the auxiliary equation, real simple algebra, it's in a complex form, and then again, once you understand this, which we derived in the last video, then we can immediately write down the solution to the differential equation. We'll have maybe one or more or two examples of this, but again, it should be pretty straightforward once we realize this relationship, and in fact, we derived this in the, uh, in the previous video here, when we first started discussing the auxiliary equation that has complex groups.